So, you believe that Saturday is a true Sabbath and a fixed week that we know has cycled without any interruptions since creation? If that's your creed, then you might have a small technical problem that is called International Dateline. This infamous line, established in 1884, is a man-made invention on your map that you can find in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The main purpose of this line is to set the boundary between two calendar days. So if you cross this line westward, you would need to add one day to your Gregorian calendar. However, crossing the line eastward would make you one day younger, in theory, of course. But as you may know, not many things on this crooked world are straight, not even this line. So to make things more complicated, our world leaders fiddled with this line for about 150 years. Now it looks like this. You may have two neighboring islands, at the same longitude, with the same time, but completely different calendar days. Or in other words, one islander having a Sabbath, while the other had it yesterday. Imagine this line going through the Israeli camp on a desert. One side would still have the preparation day, while the others already had a Sabbath. Total unbiblical nonsense. But that's how it is when you are using a man-made calendar to observe God's holy days. I'm not some big fan of novels, but this anomaly reminds me of Julius Verne's famous book Around the World in 80 Days, ironically published 11 years before the invention of IVL. In this book, the main character, Mr. Phileas Fogg, travels eastward around the world departing from London. He had bet with his friends that he could do it in 80 days. However, because he was traveling eastward, he unconsciously gained it one day. Consequently, he returned after 79 days to the same place where he initially started his journey, believing that he had lost the wager because according to his calculations, he traveled 80 days. Eventually, Mr. Fogg won the bet after being informed of the local time. If he had traveled westward, it would have also taken him 79 days, but his calculations would suggest that it had taken 78 days to complete his trip around the globe. This is the Gregorian illusion of calculating the time solely on the sun. Stay with me and I will explain it to you in details. If our protagonist decide to travel eastward around the globe his whole life without stopping and asking for a local time, then his calendar would gain a one full year. Does that mean that he would be one year older? Not really. As you can see, this novel is quite interesting, but I know a book that is even more interesting. It is called The Holy Bible. So let's put this knowledge to the test and see if it's compatible with the Word of God. Take for example Noah, his sons and the ark that rested on the mountains of Ararat after the flood. As we know from the book of Genesis chapter 9, God commanded three sons of Noah to multiply and replenish the earth. So they did as God commanded them and began to travel and discover new lands. Let us assume that at some point of their lives they would travel so far that eventually they would meet on the other side of the globe where our current international dateline is. Even though the local time would be the same, the calendar days would be different. If they tracked the time like we do today, they would be exactly 24 hours apart. And if they wanted to celebrate Sabbath together, it would not be possible. So who's wrong and who's right? Well, according to the Gregorian calendar, they are both correct. But unfortunately, Sabbath was never based on the man-made Gregorian calendar, as Pope Gregory XIII introduced his calendar in 1582, and before that we had Julian calendar that was even more inaccurate and unbiblical. Nevertheless, many Christians still believe that Saturday or Sunday is the true Sabbath, even though this calendar that we follow today didn't even exist in the time of Moses. So do you believe in this because it's the truth? Or is it truth because you believe in this? Not our faith, but God as the supreme authority validates the truth. Fortunately for us, God is an arbiter of time. And to show you another absurdity of this Gregorian calendar, let's assume that the sons of Noah were so ambitious that they decided to travel furthermore 
to meet again where the Ark is located. Now they would be 48 hours apart, even though they are both at the same place. So in this situation, you may have three people standing next to the Ark and arguing about the day of the week. Remember Phileas Fogg? According to their Gregorian calendar and calculations, they would all be correct. How crazy is that? If you think this weird situation is not possible, then watch this. Thanks to the IDL, we can now have three different calendar days at the same time across the globe. When it's 6.30 a.m. in New York on Saturday, it's 11.30 p.m. in American Samoa on Friday, while it's half past midnight in Kiribati on Sunday. Looks like time traveling really exists. Things would be even more bizarre if our forefathers decided to travel around the globe through Antarctica. In this extreme example, celebrating Sabbath would be very difficult if they decided to follow solar calendar as one day or one night in Antarctica may have six months. Without modern time measuring instruments, they would lose track of time in a matter of days. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, our international dateline was modified multiple times. These changes were made because of political and economic reasons. Whoever moved this line to the east or west didn't care completely about your Sabbath. Here I will only elaborate on two interesting examples that you can see on my list. First is Alaska that was sold to USA in 1867 and because of that transaction date was changed by 12 days so there was two consecutive Fridays. This is because Russia at that time used a Julian calendar, while USA a Gregorian. Even though the situation happened in 17 years before the introduction of IDL, celebrating a Sabbath in Alaska in that time would be a big challenge. As an Alaskan, you would not only lose one Sabbath, but also your current Sabbath would be now on Friday. A similar geographical prank happened later to Samoa Islands. In 1892, when King Malietoa Laupepa announced that the 4th of July, a Monday, would be celebrated twice. The King of Samoa changed that date not because he liked to party a lot, but because he wanted to do business with Americans. So because their Tuesday is now a Monday, technically their Saturday Sabbath is now on Friday. But that is not the end of the Samoan government's inconsistency. They changed their mind again in 2011 by going back to the west of IDL. So because of this change, they had to skip one day. If you think that they came back to normal calendar after 120 years, then you also must agree that for 120 years, they kept the Sabbath on a wrong day. Nevertheless, if you still want to argue about this, then I have a simple question for you. Which Saturday on either side of the dateline or 180 degree longitude is the real Saturday? If you have already made your decision, just make sure that your government agrees with you. Apart from the Jews, of course, probably one of the biggest Christian denominations that was directly affected by the IDL is the Seventh-day Adventist Church because they also believe that Sabbath is on Saturday. For example, in Tonga, Samoa and parts of Fiji, Seventh-day Adventists decided to observe Sunday as their Saturday Sabbath because they are located east of the 180 degree meridian. So basically, they have completely ignored the international dateline but gladly accepted the 180 degree meridian that was introduced at the International Meridian Conference in USA on October 1884. So how come they can accept one line but not the other? even though both lines have been made by men and are synchronized with the prime meridian in Greenwich. Well, if the one line fits your doctrine and other does not, then choose the one that fits your doctrine. How stubborn you must be to still follow the same doctrine when you just have been proven that it doesn't work. Stubbornness is not faith. Therefore, debate and confusion continue within the Seventh-day Adventist community in the Pacific region as to which day is the real Seventh-day Sabbath. As you may know, our God is not an author of confusion, but of peace. But you can only have that peace when you fully trust God. So let me tell you how God himself established his calendar that is literally and figuratively above any other. And God said, let there be lights in the firmaments of the heaven to divide the day from the night, 
and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. As you can see from this verse alone, we can build an entire lunisolar calendar that can cover four main units of time. Our solar system that God created is like a one big clock that doesn't even need a watchmaker to put a single drop of oil into the mechanism. All one needs is the moon to know when the months and weeks begin. And all you have to do is just observe heavenly bodies and their movement. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showed his handiwork. If you remove the moon from your calculations, you are deconstructing the whole calendar because he appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it, he's going down. The moon regulates time accurately. You cannot get away from the moon or have an excuse of not knowing the true Sabbath day as you can see the moon from absolutely everywhere in the world. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. If you depend only on the sun to tell you when the Sabbath is, then you are like the kids in the fog. You are going somewhere but you are not sure about the direction. God makes it noticeably clear in the Bible that time is inextricably linked with the sun and moon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. I don't want to go into many details here of how this calendar works because I have already made a video explaining the lunisolar calendar. Please check the link in the description for more information. So as you have seen already, the international dateline is the absolute proof against the Saturday Sabbath and also absolute evidence for the lunar Sabbath. The IDL is a man attempt to solve a man-made problem. Gregorian calendar is just another devil's substitute for the true biblical lunisolar calendar. God established his calendar in heaven, but devil sets his own on earth by drawing some zigzag lines to fool you. Man-made calendar was and can be temperate again, but biblical calendar cannot be temperate and it doesn't change just like our God. It is not possible to keep the Sabbath based on the Gregorian calendar and an imaginary dateline that can be changed anytime if they wish so. IDL and Gregorian calendar tells us that men can determine when a day, week, month or year begins or ends. If this is so, then men can establish which day the Sabbath is, which is completely unbiblical doctrine. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in men, and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. We could avoid all this confusion if we could only trust in the Lord. If only people that live in the Pacific region would accept the new moon as the first day of the month, then their Sabbath would be synchronized too, and there would be no need for IDL as the moon, and not man, would regulate the calendar. The same pattern would exist on the other side of the world where the whole congregation of Israel would see the same phases of the moon and celebrate the Sabbath at the same time. If Phileas Fogg added the moon into his calculation, then his calendar would not be ahead by one year after virtually traveling around the globe for eight years because new moons would remind him about the length of the month. The same goes for the sons of Noah that traveled around the globe and met again at the same place. If they added the moon to their calendar, which I believe they initially did, then there would be no arguing about the day of the week as the moon would correct them instantly so they all could celebrate Sabbath at the same time. If there were no international dateline and the Western Hemisphere used a lunisolar calendar, then geographical pranks like this would also be avoided. Another thing that could be avoided is the confusion while traveling through Antarctica. It is still possible to see the moon for minimum of two weeks in a month on Antarctica and when you combine it with star clock and analema you can even tell the time of the day and season you're in. If the nations would only use a universal lunisolar calendar then some continents could avoid this grotesque 12 days difference and two consecutive Fridays because they would all be guided under one heavenly calendar. If only Samoans stuck to the lunisolar calendar from the very beginning, they would not confuse their own people about Sabbath and days of the week. But that's how it is when money is a priority. 
If those islands would accept heavenly bodies as their calendar and not some artificial line that exists only on the map, then Sabbath could be celebrated by all this region at the same time. So generally, this video can be summarized in one very well-known Bible verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Or you can just go your own path and completely ignore this knowledge and do business as usual.